Hey guys, welcome to a new Escape from Tarkov video. This is for the current patch of uh, 54823. You can see in the bottom left. Uh, basically what I'm going to go in is I got a couple friends who are starting to play the game again. And I wanted to put out a basic jump in and play kind of video. So starting from standard, you have a good amount of money. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that you're going to want to do right from the start. You're going to want to go to Skier, and you're going to get your task here. You're going to get your task from Papoor, and you're going to get your task from Elvira Therapist. These are all going to be different for you, so don't worry about it. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to notice that you can buy these med kits for $55. And since you probably only have Ruples in the standard, you want to go ahead and buy, I'd say at least... Let's say, how much would 600 get us? So that's going to get us 57,000. That's actually a lot. That means you can get 10 of these IFACs. And then we're going to go over that and why that's important later. It's a very useful med medical uh, tool to use for whenever you're just in combat and whatnot. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to get is, I'd say, six of these painkillers. These are very important if you get shot in the leg and your leg goes to zero, you won't be able to run. So this is going to be the kind of thing where if you think you're about to get in a firefight, I usually will pop one in advance. That's more into later like combat tactics, but basically these are the kind of things that are going to help you in, in a fight. It's going to be one of the first things you pop because if you're walking around you get shot and your leg's broken, you can't run. So you want to be able to quickly press your key and then just keep running. And we're going to go in that again, as I said later. All right, so the next thing you're going to talk about is guns. What kind of guns should you use as a new player? I recommend going in with your pistols that you get from the start and just go lose them. Just go out and lose them and just play the game. But the next thing you're going to want to do is to buy some of these Vepers. Uh, yeah, it's this right here. No, no, that's the AKM. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go here to rank one so I can see. Oh, I'm sorry. I was in the complete wrong part of the... Uh, I was wrong trader. Here we go. It's the Vepper. This is probably one of the greatest guns in the game. It's very accurate. It puts people down. It uses a very powerful bullet. And it's very accessible. It's only 23k. You're going to need to spend a, cert a lot of money on this guy anyway at some point. Skier is one of the most important ones to rank up. And I highly recommend you rank him up first. Because then you get access to armor. Which increases your survivability by at least 200%. And that's not even a joke. And you also get access to this uh, backpack, which is huge. And these two things mean you get more gear, you live longer, you live more often, and you have better guns to buy. You can see you can also... Uh, well, you don't really get that many good guns from this guy. But I, I digress. Let's go now. Since we talked about the guns that we're going to pick up, we've talked about the uh, meds that we're going to buy and pick up. And now let's talk about gear as a whole instead. So we said that we were going to get painkillers, we're going to get IFACs, and we got the Vepper. So I have a Vepper, it's slightly modded here. It's actually, it's really not modded that much. I just have a silencer, a sight, and a handrail. So I mean, it's modded to my liking, but you don't need to have any of this on it. it this is just me, I have the gun, it's better. I'll go over that setup much later. You don't want to really worry about that. You don't need to worry about setup as long as you're new to the game. The thing you do need to worry about is planning. Every time, right before you, before you go into a match, you need to know what your plan is. And this is the very first stage. So the first stage is I have my container set up. Most of you might have a 2x2, two two, so you only have four. I recommend something like this, where you have two IFACs, two painkillers, and you have at least one or two up here. It's completely dependent on you. And then I have at least one uh, healing uh, hotkey. So this way I can press four if, as soon as I get shot and then I can keep running. And then I can be pressing five the entire time that I'm hiding or trying to check for where he is. So I'm healing myself up because you wanna make sure that you none, none of this goes zero. So the faster that you can get to cover by preventing you getting slowed by your legs is the painkillers. And then the IFAC is how you just drag to heal. And you want to be instead just spamming that with five because it's hotkeyed. Also to know you can only hotkey items that are up here. 
in your pocket or your rig. I can't hotkey it from here and I can't hotkey, hotkey it from down here. Just a minor little thing there. Next thing is ammo. See, don't worry about that. I don't know why that's in there. Uh, ammo. I always at least, at least bring 120 rounds. That's right here. So I can fill these two mags up um, four times. One, two, three, four, yeah. But I like to bring a little more personally because I usually get in more gunfights. I usually live a little bit longer because I'm more used to the game. And now the very last thing. What map are we playing on? What is our task? Are we trying to find something? Are we trying to do something? I don't... I recommend playing a lot of factory if you can. It's actually very busy lately. You probably can't get in there. So the next one I'm probably going to say is go in and try and get some customs done. Now we're going to go on offline and we're going to do uh, PVE. And what we're going to do is we're going to get in and I'm going to show you the kind of method I would as if I was playing a real game and what I would be watching out for. Now there has been a lot of changes that makes this a little more com complicated. The spawns aren't static anymore. There's actually at least two. There's two different sides you can spawn on the map. And at the same time, there are different spawns within those two. So there's, it's, it's so complicated to try and completely explain that kind of thing to you right now. So what we're really doing is how do we get into the game and how do we stay alive and not just die at the start of the game? You want to kind of know where the threats are coming from and where they will be and where they won't be. So that's what I'm going to try and express in this little segment right here. So, all right, we're deploying now. All right, so a little bit of frame drop there. Uh, so now that we're going, we're pushing through. Now, this is one of the most dangerous spawns in the entire game, in my opinion. And that is because right now there are spawns over there past that fence. There are spawns behind this building way over there. And I believe you can even spawn, uh, I'm pretty sure you can spawn a little ways back over in that corner and maybe even in this building. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can spawn in this building as well. I'm not sure. I think there's a spawn over here, but it's usually someone who doesn't have much gear. So that's already, you're surrounded. So typically what I would do if I spawned here, I'd already, I would have run immediately as a solo player. I would have gotten the fuck out and try and get to this wall because you're going to hear a lot of gunfire from over there. You're going to hear a lot of players start shooting each other and that's just going to be a huge clusterfuck. So let's say I wanted to go to dorms. Now dorms is a very hotly contested part of the map, so I don't recommend you rushing over there at least early on unless you really know what you're doing or you're prepared so let's say i'm going to try and go to dorms i'm going to try and hug the side and avoid the major traffic zones most people are probably going to be coming behind me right now there or they'll be in a fight if there's no gunfire know that people are behind you and they're making the same path most likely so be aware of that. Try not to slow down and be in the open like this. You would kind of want to be as a solo player going through bushes and trying to get through and avoid. And you want to have as much uh, cover as possible. You want to make sure you always have something at least behind you to obscure vision. So that way whenever you turn and if you think you see somebody, you can respond or you can just keep, you can just get the hell out of there. Now, uh, let's go ahead and go over some of these other landmarks. This is uh, two-story dorms. In front of it is going to be three-story dorms. And there's almost always going to be scabs in front of this building in the center. Uh, a little ways past over there to the, uh, to the front. And there's always going to be scabs inside this bus station, out to the side, and on the road in front of it as well. So if I was trying to approach dorms from this position... I know that I have players coming from the opposite side. I don't. I, I really wish I could show you that as well. I may in a later video if I ever go over spawns, but I think other people have already covered that. So I, I just check that shit out from other people's channels. Uh, so really, I would just kind of YOLO it if I was here already and people were still fighting. Just kind of come in here. There's a spawn for a factory key in here. I'd always check this table. I never found it there, but it's worth a check 
Watch out, as I said, for scabs in this little courtyard. Now, as I was saying, there's also supposed to be scabs right around here. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a couple sneaking around or if there's a group just inside that compound right now. Let's see if we can spot any by getting over here real quick. I swear, I know I turned PvE on. I guess I just haven't spawned yet. That's another thing, this, the spawns, the changing of spawns, they've changed it where scabs don't spawn as reliably. Now this is a very important moment right now for this map because this is a crossroads where players are basically at the same spot where they could be from both sides. So this is where a lot of the combat will happen. A lot of it's going to be over there and a lot of it's going to be over here. And there's going to be scabs over here in construction. If there aren't, I'm going to be very surprised. Yep, alright, cool. There are scabs here. Let's see if we can get in a little combat here. Really? There we go. So you see, I basically one-tapped that scab, and I don't think that was even a headshot. That was a body for some like, what the hell? Who killed that? Uh, you want to watch out for scabs up here. That's usually the big revealer for scabs is if you hear them. So I know there's a scab over here somewhere. Where are you at, buddy? Hello? Oh. Did that kill him? If that killed him, then that's just gonna show more or less like the power of this gun. Yes. See, I already started healing. Yeah, one bullet in his back. Put him dead. Look at that. This this is a very very powerful round. So you see, this is a, this gun ain't messing around. It'll put people down if you can land your shots, especially if you just go for the for the chest and then just let your tap 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 go up to the head, which is typically what I do. Upper chest to the head. Always just drag to your mag. That's really basically it for the starter guide. You kind of just want to make sure that you know what you're doing. You want to get comfortable with your spawns. You want to get comfortable with where people are coming from. And you don't want to get comfortable using it. Holy shit! And you want to get comfortable about using your gun. Holy shit, what did she have? An AK-74N? Really? That is not common. And last but not least, you want to know about your escapes. So this is going to be a major point of contention for a lot of people who just don't know the game. But the major thing is to think is like if I spawn on that side, my escapes are where I spawned just earlier. And since I spawned on that side, my escapes are going to be over here. So my escapes right now are Crossroads, Trailer Park, RUAF, and Smuggler's Boat. The question marks mean that those spawns are going to show up at random times or rather later times and then they also may or may not even be there so like the smuggler's boat is supposed to be right around here i don't think that's it but it's supposed to be over there at that side over there in the water you yeah it's at the far corner of that uh river and Crossroads, which is the only exit I have had work for me over here.
gonna be all the way down here at the far end of this road. Now, this isn't the safest way to get there, but I've come this path and I've also gone through the side over there. I've really almost, I've never run into a person down this, coming down this way. I've run into scabs, but that's literally it. Never an actual player or scab or anything. Pop PKs just because, like, if I was gonna, sh gonna get shot here, I'd want to be able to keep running. And here we are. You can go all the way around this corner, which I certainly would if I were you. Well, don't do what I did there and and cuck yourself with the exit, but this right here is about as safe as you could possibly get for this extract. And so see, we made it out. And that's the kind of thing that you want to think about whenever you're going in. What's the plan? What's my objective? How am I going to get out of here? And what am, what is my goal? Like, what am I trying to do? Am I just going to go in for some loot and kill? Then you want to make sure you know where your exits are. And you want to make sure... Excuse me. And you want to make sure you know what you're doing. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you checking out this video. I know it's a little scatterbrained, but it's difficult for a new player to really get into this game and to like understand what things you should focus on. Get your tasks, learn the map, die a lot. You need to die. You need to fail. It's a lot like Dark Souls. It's a lot like any other game. You need to go in and let yourself die and fail. Don't get frustrated by taking in a bunch of gear that you don't know how to use. I'd use a lot of the offline mode because it's a great teacher. It will give you random starts and random setups and you can practice against scavs and you can really learn the map. And as long as you understand about the concept of like ammo to buy, what guns to use, then you'll just keep learning and learning and as long as you have PKs and IFACs, at least in this patch right now, you're going to be set for those two major things. And also understanding your uh, rig setup and everything else. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Good luck.